Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, I want to spend a bit more time talking about some of the smaller syntax elements in the Visual Basic language that you need to master to understand how a properly formed line of code is constructed. Now, Visual Basic has a syntax and parts of speech that are similar to other languages like English, for example. There are nouns and verbs. There's a way of expressing a complete thought. So let's just take that as an example. In the English language, there's a period at the end of a sentence. And in Visual Basic, each complete thought lives on its own line. So you can see that there are rough equivalents between what you know about English, or any human language for that matter, and what you'll learn about programming languages. So as we get started, it might be helpful to understand how to compose a complete thought in the Visual Basic language Let's start by describing the basic building blocks. First of all, statements are complete thoughts, or complete sentences, if you will, in Visual Basic. Statements are made up of one or more expressions, and expressions are made up of operators and operands. Now, we've seen several expressions already up to this point. We've seen expressions like the one that you see here uh, on the text on this slide, if you will, uh, that we've been working through for this series of videos up to this point. For example, console.writeline hello world. If user value equals one, then, and x plus seven, these are all examples of expressions. And there are others, but the expressions have two things in common. They consist of operators and operands. Operands are things like objects, or for now, just think of classes like the console class, or variables, or literal strings. I suppose you could even call these the nouns, if you want to extend that analogy. Operators are things like the plus operator, which, when working with numeric data, it indicates that you want to add two values together, or the ampersand uh, operator, which is used to concatenate strings together like we've seen in some examples up to now. There's also the equal sign, which we already noted means uh, both variable assignment, and we've also used it to check for equality uh, like we did in the previous video where we were using it in the if and else if statements. Uh, so here's some other operators that we've seen, but you might not typically think of as an operator. Uh, there is the open and close parentheses. That's an operator. It's used for method invocation, like console.readline open close parentheses. What happens if you were to ignore those? Ignore those? Uh, it changes the meaning of the code, and Visual Basic doesn't understand, and it might even raise an error. In fact, the code editor will insert those for you if you forget to type them in. That's how important they are. Another operator is the dot operator, or the period, and that indicates member access. So again, using the console object or class, we accessed the members of that class, in other words, the methods that belong to it, using the dot operator. And we'll be using that a lot as we continue to write code. And I'll have more to say about classes later in this series of lessons. The key idea now is that the period or the dot is an operator. And there are actually quite a few number of operators, but as you start out, you'll probably only need to know a select list of them. So in the moments ahead, I wanna focus on just a few of these. They'll come in rapid fire succession. Uh, you would probably do yourself uh, a favor by writing some of these down and committing them to memory. Uh, uh, you can always refer to this video or other resources online to get a comprehensive list of operators in Visual Basic. So as you can see, I've already created a project called Operators, Expressions, and Statements. And I trust that you already know from our previous videos how to create a new Visual Basic Windows Console application. So I'm going to skip that step from this point on. Next, I'm going to paste in some code into our submain. And I'll just use this as a means of working rapidly through examples of, of operators. The first operator is the assignment operator. Here we're using the equal sign to assign the value of 3 to the variable x. Next, the addition operator using the plus symbol to add two numbers together. And this will follow a similar pattern for other mathematical functions and operators like the subtraction operator, the multiplication operator, which is the asterisk key over the number eight on your keyboard, the division operator. Of course, you wanna make sure that you get the correct 
slash. This would be the forward slash. We've talked about using the equal sign as an equality operator. We recall from the previous video how we are testing uh, the value of y and whether it's equal to x or not by using the equal sign. And so if this is true, then you'll execute this block of code. If it's false, you will not. Again, that's the equality operator for testing. And there are other testing operators like the greater than symbol, just like you would have in math, the less than symbol, the greater or equal to symbol, and the less than or equal to symbol. There are also operators that allow you to, um, I guess, concatenate two expressions together. So here we have a evaluation of if x is greater than y or a is greater than b, then execute this code. So it's either or. And there's a conditional, an and conditional operator, which allows you to make sure that both of these conditions are true. If x is greater than y and a is greater than b, then execute this block of code, okay? And then we talked about the member access and method invocation operators earlier in this video. We said that uh, the method invocation is indicated through parentheses. In this particular case, we're passing in a value to our method or function or procedure, all similar ideas, uh, by passing in the literal string high. We're also accessing the member of the console class by using the dot or period operator. So do you think you can memorize this list? Well, you really need to. There's actually a longer list, but like I said earlier, 99% of the time, these are the operators that you're gonna find yourself using. In each of these cases, an expression is made up of two things, right? Uh, operands, which are things like a literal string, like high, that we pass into the right line method. Uh, the console class is another operand. The x or y variables are operands. And then also they're combined with operators, which are things like the greater or less than symbol, the open and close parentheses, the dot, the addition, the equal sign, and so on. So you use expressions then, expressions made up of operators and operands, you use expressions to form statements, which are how the actions or instructions of an application are expressed. We've already seen several great examples of statements as we've written applications up to this point. And you might be saying, well, I don't remember seeing any statements. Of course you did, you just didn't know what they were called. For example, dim x as integer, that is a statement. It is a particular type of statement called a decision statement. Uh, we've also written it this way, dim x as integer equals zero. Uh, you can see that it performs two different functions in a single statement, both declaration and initialization. There are also expression statements like my string equals my first name, ampersand my last name, or uh, some value equals three times x divided by 100. In these cases, the expression is evaluated first and then assigned to some other value, uh, like a variable, for example. There are decision statements. We've already seen one example so far, and we'll add to that list a little bit later. Uh, if x is greater than y, then z equals bob and if, all right? A decision statement. There are iteration statements which we'll show in a later lesson. And there are a couple of others, but basically the syntax rules of Visual Basic uh, apply in each of these cases. So you can't just go into your code editor and do something like that. Visual Basic will be like, have you lost your mind? What am I supposed to do with this? This isn't a complete sentence in Visual Basic. The Visual Basic code editor will attempt to reformat the code. So if I were to hit the return key on my keyboard, notice that it tries its hardest in a desperate attempt to understand what the heck you're trying to do here. It'll put a blue squiggly line, you can see underneath the X, uh, for code that it doesn't understand, suggesting that you really need to rethink what you're attempting to do here. And the reason is because you didn't follow the syntax rules of Visual Basic. So for beginners, understanding that there's a proper syntax, just like understanding that there's proper grammar in the English language, is a big step to solving your own problems or your own phrasing of how to compose code in Visual Basic instructions that the Visual Basic compiler will accept. All right, so just to recap, 
Statements are complete instructions in Visual Basic. They consi consist of expressions. And a statement is like a sentence in the English language. And the expressions are things like nouns and verbs. Actually, expressions are made up of operators and operands. Operands are things like objects. For now, you can think of classes like the console class or variables or literal strings and so on. I suppose you could call these the nouns in the Visual Basic language. Operators are like verbs then to extend that analogy. They act on the operators. And we spend a little bit of time here looking at a laundry list of about a dozen or so operators. And uh, we've been using operators for all sorts of purposes up till now, uh, even if we didn't quite identify them in that regard up to now. Uh, and you have to memorize the operators, at least a small list of them. Operands, on the other hand, are like variables and classes and strings, and these are easy to remember because you kind of create those yourself. You make them up. You give them names. Uh, you have to memorize the operators because they are the way that you do something meaningful with your operands, okay? So I just wanted to make those distinctions as we get started to help you get a firmer grasp of the Visual Basic language. Hope that helps. Let's pick it up in the next video with some more practical uses for Visual Basic. We'll see you then. Thank you.